Unspeakable, written by Karen Boston Weatherford and illustrated by Floyd Cooper. Unspeakable, the Tulsa Race Massacre. For every Black life, every Black hope, and every Black dream. For my grandpa, C.D. Williams, because you talked. Once upon a time near Tulsa, Oklahoma, prospectors struck it rich in the oil fields. The wealth created jobs, raised buildings, and attracted newcomers from far and wide, seeking fortune and a fresh start. Once upon a time in Tulsa, there was a community called Greenwood. The residents descended from Black Indians, from formerly enslaved people, and from the exodusters who moved west in the late 1800s, fleeing the violence and racism of the segregated South. Once upon a time in Greenwood, there were some 10,000 people living in a 35 square black area. The train tracks divided the black and white communities. Segregation laws called for separate neighborhoods, schools, phone booths, railroad and street coaches. Unfair tests made it hard for blacks to register to vote and laws barred marriages across racial lines. So many black businesses cropped up along a one mile stretch of Greenwood Avenue, the educator and business leader Booker T. Washington called it the Negro Wall Street of America. The name later became the Black Wall Street and the community kept thriving. Once upon a time on Black Wall Street, there were dozens of restaurants and grocery stores. There were furriers, a pool hall, a bus system and an auto shop nearly 200 businesses in all. There was also several libraries, a hospital, a post office, and a separate school system where some black children say they got a better education than the white children. There were two black owned newspapers, the Tulsa Star and the Oklahoma Sun, and there were over 20 churches. There were 15 black doctors, including Dr. A.C. Jackson, the most able black surgeon in the nation. On Detroit Avenue stood grand homes of doctors, lawyers, and prominent businessmen. Wow, these black people are really thriving. Once upon a time in Greenwood, there were barber shops and beauty salons. Miss Mabel's Little Rose Beauty Salon boomed. On Thursdays, when maids who worked for white families got coiffed on their day off and strutted in style up and down Greedwood Avenue. The soda fountain at Williams Confectionery was the backdrop for scores of marriage proposals. And there was a luxurious Stratford Hotel, then the largest black owned hotel in the nation. Black guests were welcomed there even as they were barred from the Tulsa White Hotels. Once upon a time in Greenwood, there were two movie theaters, including an 800 seat black owned Dreamland. There were even six privately owned airplanes. But in 1921, not everyone in Tulsa was pleased with these signs of black wealth. Undeniable proof that African Americans could achieve just as much, if not more, than white people. All it took was one elevator ride. One 17 year old white elevator operator accusing a 19 year old black shoe shine man of assault for simmering hatred to boil over. With the accused man in jail, the white owned Tulsa Tribune newspaper ran a headline prompting readers to nab him. Fearing the man would be lynched or killed by a mob before his trial, 30 armed black men rushed downtown to his rescue. At the jail, they faced off with 2,000 armed white people. On May 31st, 1921, one day after Memorial Day, a holiday that honors fallen soldiers, skirmishes between the two groups left two black men and 10 white men dead. But the worst was yet to come. 
Unable to get the jailed suspect, a white mob sparked rumors that the black community planned to attack. Unchecked and in some cases deputized by the police, the white mob stormed over into Greenwood, looting and burning homes of businesses that black people had saved and sacrificed to build. Threatening to shoot, the mob blocked firefighters from putting out the blazes. African-American World War I veterans took up arms to defend their families and property, but they were outnumbered and outgunned. Families fled with only what they could carry. Once upon a time in Greenwood, up to 300 Black people were killed, including Dr. Jackson. Hundreds more were injured. More than 8,000 people were left homeless and hundreds of businesses and other establishments were reduced to ash. The police did nothing to protect the black community. And when the National Guard arrived the next day, all that was left to do was put out fires and move the thousands of black residents into camps outside Tulsa. The community lay in ruins. Black residents had to carry passes to enter the city. In the days and weeks that followed, some Black Tulsans left and never returned. Others stayed and rebuilt the Greenwood community, only to witness its decline in the 1960s. For decades, survivors did not speak of the terror. 75 years passed before lawmakers launched an investigation to uncover the painful truth about the worst racial attack in United States history. Police and city officers had plotted with the white mob to destroy the nation's wealthiest black community. Today, Tulsa's Reconciliation Park remembers victims of the 1921 massacre and recalls the role of African-Americans in Oklahoma's history. But the park is not just a bronze monument to the past. It's a place to realize the responsibility we all have to reject hatred and violence and instead, Choose hope. This is a note from the author. I hope you take a moment to read it and learn a little bit more about what happened during the Tulsa Race Massacre. There's also a note from the illustrator. It's important that you read that to understand the images in the book and the message they're trying to convey. There is also a discussion guide available and you can find it at learnersbook.com slash unspeakable. The end.